Welcome, welcome to episode 46 of Chess Was TV. Today is July 31st, 2014. I got it all right so far. And we're going to do some self-study, some introspection today. People were begging me during the countdown, during the, um, the time preparing for this chat, for this episode, to study Three Checks Chess, because a new variant just came out on Lie Chess called Three Checks Chess. It's already kind of popular other places on the internet. Basically, you check the opponent three times and you win. But we don't have time for that. we got to do our studies. We must be good students. So this episode, we are going to be good students looking to improve our skills, or at least my skills, in the game of chess. Now, next episode, on Saturday, we'll do some three checks chess. So if you're waiting for three checks chess, just sit tight. If you're not, if you don't care about improving at chess, if you just want to laugh because I'm being dumb on the internet, you should just turn off the stream right now because this episode is not going to be as dumb as most episodes. We're just going to, you know, learn, we're going to study, we're going to improve. So boring stuff today. So that's just your warning. It's going to be boring today. Next episode, not boring. We're playing three checks chess. And then the episode after that is Fun Day Monday. We're doing Pawn Storm. So guys, if you didn't hear about that, you want to be castling on the other side of the board as your opponent, Pawn Storming him, and send me recordings of those games. So you're not allowed to castle if he doesn't castle. You have to sit there with your king so that when he does castle, you can go to the opposite side of the board. Good luck with that. And then throw your pawns in his face. Beat him. Send me the game. Actually, you can lose till too. You don't have to win the game to submit it. And then maybe we'll go over that. That's two episodes from now on Tuesday, which we call Fun Day Monday. But let's get started right now with some self-study. Doot, click. Doot. Oh, hold on. I'm playing an AI level 8. Stay on this page. Flag. Resign. Cancel. Did you hear that? That was me canceling. Okay. Here we are on lichess.org and I'm invisible. Let's try again. Here we are on lichess.org and I'm so visible. Lichess dorg. Dorg. Okay, create a game. We're going to play the FIDE official time control for Blitz games, which is three minutes and two seconds added. And we're going to not play the three check variant. You guys can see I've been doing that. Uh, and we want to play against a pretty strong opponent. So we're going to go, we're going to go 2,000 here for the bottom rating. So you've got to be quite a decent chess player to play against me today. I'm looking for strong opponents because I want to lose. Now, it might seem strange, but the best way to improve is to play people better than you. Now, I'm not saying 2,000 is better than me, but maybe it is. I just want to play some really strong opponents today so I can improve. And we're going to study those games as they come out. Hopefully, we won't miss quite as many obvious moves as we did last episode, when a bishop could have captured a pawn trapping a rook that nobody mentioned, not even me. Yeah, we missed a lot of things last episode, because the point was not to not miss nothing. The point was to have fun, which we did. I had fun. I don't know about you, but no one's joining my game. That's the problem with trying to get really strong opponents is that, like, they don't, they aren't there. They're not around. They're probably saying three minutes and two added. What's that? That sounds weird. Well, it is kind of weird, so. Hey, guys, did you see the new symbols on here? Where'd I go? There I am. There's a new symbol for every game type. When this came out yesterday, I was so confused because it's like they just throw a random symbol on every one. So let me help you. The lightning means blitz chess. Does that make sense? Good. And the flame, there aren't any flames on here for some reason, means bullet chess. Where's the flame? There's a flame. So you might think lightning and flame is like the same thing. Right. The flame is also the symbol for the for the win streak. So I'm getting a message in chat that 2000 is now a higher rating. So that's why I'm having trouble. You can see that my rating, you can't see that my rating, is only 1932. Here, I'll click this. Ah, no, you still can't tell. My rating's 1932, but it's usually around 2100. But they just fixed they just fixed the rating system, so now everybody's rated lower. So maybe I need to cancel this and create a slightly lower game. We're going to move it down 100 rating points simply because the ratings were just toyed with yet again. What do these other symbols mean? The dice means it's chess 960. That makes sense. The hourglass means it's slower chess, classical chess, they call it. And then if it's too slow even for that, then like 25 minutes, this game right here, then they put a crown on it. That part's pretty confusing. Crown simply means it's a game of chess, and it's not in any rating category because it's too slow to be any of the bullet blitz or classical. So that's a lot of symbols. I don't know about the crown symbol. That really puts it over the top for being confusing. But I just know stay away from crowns because you're sure to get bored. The crowns are the very, very slow games. And then there's more cool symbols because they've added three check chess here, which we discussed. And that's three layers of squares, of diamonds. That's a pretty cool symbol. 
No one wants to play me. It's probably my time control. 3-2. Come on, guys. This is your big chance to play Chess Whiz, except you have to be highly rated to play me. Is there anything wrong with my Seek? 3-2. Control. Rated. 1900. Standard. Yeah, it looks fine. Okay. And then there's also King of the Hill variant, which is my personal favorite, which uh, I don't remember the symbol. Oh, let's go find out. Let's look at the new profile page. Look at that. Ratings galore. So the king of the hill is the flag. I think that makes a lot of sense. We got an opponent. Did you hear that ding? I did too. Ding! Opponent. We're playing the Fisher Arm. Hi. Hi. How are you? Let's get chatty. Oh, it's the French defense. I'm going to improve at chess today. Yes, I hope that he knows how to speak English. He speaks that language. I'm looking closely at it. Okay, I don't even know what that language is. It's one thing to say, oh, I don't speak that. Like, if it said Deutsch, I would be like, hmm, Deutsch, I don't speak that. But if it says this thing, I can't even say I don't speak it. Maybe I speak it and I just don't know, because I do not know that language. Wow. French defense advanced variation. This is going to be fun. Uh, knight f3. Oh, message in chat. The site creator, Ornicar, says that the hourglass should be applied even to the slow, slow, slow game. So that'll get rid of the crown and simplify it a little bit. What am I supposed to do here? Is it bishop d3? Because I know if we take, 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 I can discover check with bishop b5 and then win his queen. So I know it's safe. But then if he plays bishop d7, what am I supposed to do? Just pull back to c2? Because then he could take, take, and then knight down here and take my good bishop. So I don't think I want that. Uh, there's also bishop e2 I could just play. I can't move this bishop or I lose my b2 pawn. How am I out of book already? This is the most simple French defense advanced variation position in the history of French defense advanced variation. Uh... Bishop d3, take, take with pawn, knight b4, well, I lose my good bishop. So I guess I'll do that. So sad. He's going to bring his knight to f5 and attack me again. I guess I'll push here so that I can use my dark square bishop to help defend. I'm going to have to look this up after the game. It's self-study, so we're going we're gonna to introspect. Now, self-study could mean something else. It could mean... Uh, that I carefully analyze my body and all of the body parts are in place. Oh no! Great! I definitely need to do some learning in chess because this is a, ter a terrible problem. No! I have to block this check or king f1. If I block with knight, three attackers on here, two defenders, he takes it. Block with knight here, take, 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 same problem. Block with bishop, he takes my bishop, then he gets this thing. King f1 for the win! Okay, so I've got some learning to do. Got some serious learning to do. Just one second, I'm going to blow my nose. This always happens in the morning. Okay, now that I've got king f1, I've got to get my king out a little further. Why don't I just save time and kick the knight while I'm at it? I was thinking g3 so I can move my king out, but why play g3? Wait, where am I? There I am! Why play g3 when you could play g4? Yeah, I don't waste time with boring old g3. So I'm already in not the right position. King f1 I don't think is quite right, although I think it was the best move, better than blocking the check. I really have the feeling that bishop d3 was correct, and not bishop e2. I'm just not sure what I was supposed to do about him chasing it down with his knight. Maybe I just allow it and I'm okay. Take, 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 takes no good. Push, he takes with take. I push. Okay, maybe I push, knight back, and push again. That's weird. What if I take on passant? He takes with pawn. My king is a little unstable. I gotta get that thing out so I can start attacking the center. If I take with pawn, there's a backwards pawn here. Can he play e5? Ta okay, so if he recaptures with pawn, he certainly can. If he takes with rook, then he can't. Maybe he still can't. Opposant's probably best, but what about, let's, ah, time is out! Who invented this time control? Come on, Fide. This is supposed to be a nice slow time control so I can learn. And all I'm learning to do is play too fast. He's not answering me because he's, I learned in chat this is Armenian, which is the same, ooh, 
three defenders, three attackers, I'm okay. Get out. No matter where he goes, I gotta play b4 to hold on to my pawn. This isn't going right at all. Now my bishop is even badder. I need to move this knight out. Hmm. Yeah, now I'm having to play too fast. Can't recapture there. My knight's totally trapped. I only have one rook that's useful. Seriously sad. My position fell apart. Hmm. Yeah, I'm having to move such quick moves that it really doesn't feel rewarding to be playing this game of chess. I don't feel like I'm doing a great job studying anymore. Just trying to untangle here, get all my pieces developed. As the white player, I should get my pieces out first and more easily, especially with all the space I was able to take. And instead, I'm struggling to even move everything off the back rank. Instead, I'm moving it back onto the back rank. Oh, Lechester says you, he read somewhere that you can let go of the d4 pawn and still not die. Well, unfortunately... Oh, Michael wants to play me. That's cool. Hi, Michael. One minute and three seconds per move. That's a cool idea. Chess 960? No. Sorry, I'm not playing chess 960 right now. I'm doing my studies. Okay, move that rook. Knight d2. Oh, really? Then I could take your knight here, which pins your... Okay, this is starting to look good except for my time. Now you're pinned. I just have to get everything developed because I moved it all back to the back rank. Alright, did I pick up a pawn there? Yep, so now it's even again. Six pawns to six. Uh-oh. Okay, I can trade queens also. Six pawns to six. Now I've got a pass pawn with a rook behind it. That's good. Oh, now it's not behind it. Still keeping up. His knight's kind of stuck. I think bishop b2 to challenge here. So that I can, come on nose, get behind my rook again. Now he's got to protect here. Pretty good structure. Two pawns for one on this side of the board. My knight is well positioned to hit the queening square. I need to use my king. That wasn't a good move, and I'm moving too fast. Hey, awesome, awesome Almorn. Hey. He calls me Awesome Streamer. Is this episode about self-study plan? No, I'm just trying to improve at chess. It's nothing complicated. It's nothing like three steps to being a GM. I'm just trying to improve my rating by one point. Because if I could do that every day, then in a year it could go up 365 points, which is a decent improvement. Especially for someone at my level, all I do is get worse and worse at chess because I play too fast. So it's really great that I might improve even a little bit. I'm still holding this endgame together. I mean, this is starting to look studyable again. Look at that. There's definitely something to learn from this game. And be able to take these pawns. They're really falling apart. Meanwhile, this is going to cause problems for him. Eventually, he'll get it. I mean, he's focusing on it a lot. <clears throat> there he goes. He got it. Just jump over here because I'd love to be on the seventh rank, especially trapping his king to the back rank. Go here, is that safe? Is that any good? I think I'm okay here. Weird, huh? Now he's going to run out of time. He's going to run out of time. This is pretty good for me. He can't stop rook f7, which I'll just play now. You would like a trade? Yes! I'm up a, I'm up a pawn here, so... And my king is... 
Oh, oh, time. Watch that time, pal. Watch it, watch it. My king is more over there. Ah, not anymore. Yeah, his knight's pretty trapped. Not coming in very well. How can I win? It's very hard, because if he trades his knight for my last pawn, then he wins. Uh-oh. Ooh. Ooh. Are you one of those child prodigies? Asks Al Morn. Well, that's relative. A relatively answerable question. Everyone is a child prodigy. Some are just more prodigy than others. <coughs> and some have trouble with nasal passages. Come on, check me again. Bring it. This is so silly. What am I even doing? I'm going to I'm going to come over here. This looks like a good square. Yep, yep. Trouble now. Now your knight is trapped. Yes. It worked. He didn't have to throw his knight away. He could have king here to e5. And then I yes, I won. Okay. I usually win my chess games, but I don't usually play well. So that's what we're trying to change. Okay, let's replay and analyze this position with computer analysis. You look so young, yet you played com competitively for 15 years, says the guy. Well, while that analysis is running, let me explain why my hair looks like this. I didn't comb it. Hmm. Isn't that great? I've got a camera right in front of me. I can see. I should just wake up in the morning, turn on Chesswiss TV, and comb my hair, because I can see myself. The only problem is left is right and right is left. Guys, this is my right hand, which makes sense to you, because you're watching me with my right hand, but to me it makes no sense, because I reach out like this, it's not like a mirror. In a mirror, I would see it on the same side of my body, so it's super confusing. I've played chess for a long time. The secret to that is looking young. When I was 16, I looked 12. When I was 20, I looked 16. And now I look 20. And I'm not telling you how old I am, but I'm way older than 20. Okay, more nose blowing, and then we're not going to do that again. Hold on a moment. Gotta hide, hide myself. Hide! There we go. I should enter the nasal blowing competition. National nasals is what they call that. I am so practiced. So good at it. Okay, so let's see. What should I have done in that French defense? Advanced variation is okay. Knight f3, good. Queen b6, bishop b2. Computer does not criticize that. But if you look a little bit lower down here on the screen, you can see advantage minus 0.2. That's advantage for black by a fifth of a pawn. That's kind of strange since I started this chess game. Let's rewind one step. Advantage zero. So my bishop e2 made the thing think I wasn't so good, but not so badly enough that it's going to criticize. We're going to have to look at the bishop d3 line and see if it thinks that's any good. Knight to e7. b3. Inaccuracy. Best to capture. How strange. Best to capture. I'm not used to that, guys. I'm used to keeping this pawn chain strong and not wavering. Maybe it says I should capture here because capture and b4 because of the specific move order b5 what am i doing interesting see i would never play like this in a game without a whole lot of thinking because look how strange the pawns got are you even sure this is good computer it looks really really weird i guess it's probably good computer says so okay computer trades knight f5 bishop b2 so far pretty even game king f1 if computer doesn't complain about that Computer's happy with this. Computer's even happy with this. It says it's pretty even. It says it's still, you know, minus 0.1. But how am I not developed at all? A3, B4, A5. It still says minus 0.1 even position here, but this is such a crazy position to me. Black's disadvantage is his backwards e6 pawn. This pawn is blocking in his own bishop, and pushing it is very difficult, because the pawn is guarding it, the bishop is guarding it through the pawn, and the knight is on it. Three defenders, only two attackers on this square right now, and if he can't get it pushed, then I have this great hole, and he's stuck back with less space. And when he does push it, then he's got an isolated d pawn to worry about. So this is still 
okay for me. The problem here is I'm falling apart on the queen side. Queen d2 was wrong. The computer says I should have just pushed because I lost a pawn with queen d2, so that totally makes sense. Kick the knight back. In this imaginary line where I'm smarter, I maneuver a little bit. I've got my pieces out here pretty much, so I can see why that'd be better. Okay, so back to the game. Instead of that, I played queen d2. He captured, and then I pushed. It actually says it was best to recapture, but I lose a pawn flat out this way if I retake. Trade, trade, queen takes b4. Yeah, I've, I've lost a pawn with almost no compensation here, except except black is taking that knight, but I don't think he has to do that. Okay, so I push, bishop d7. So now it says black's ahead by two pawns. So black made some terrible bad move here. It says I shouldn't have done this. Queen d3 is better, so I can bring my knight out. <laughs> Knight a5 mistake, should have brought the queen around. Yeah, this kind of puts this piece out on the edge of the board. Still big advantage for black. And now I have, uh, he lost a pawn's worth of advantage. Now he's only ahead three quarters of a pawn. It says he should have sacrificed the exchange. This is really cool, guys. You see a lot of exchange sacrifices on c3 and f3. I'm not sure why, but this just happens. It's usually black doing it, and it's usually happening on f3 or c3. In this case, giving up that rook for that knight means I don't have nearly the attackers on e5, and this knight was really hitting the center in some useful places. Now that it's gone, I don't have that. Okay, so I still don't. But I still don't like it. I have a really hard time sacrificing the exchange for a positional reason, but it's what the computer recommends here. Doop, 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 F4, take, take, take. Discovered attack. Why does the computer recommend all these strange moves? And it stops right before the obvious recapture. You know, I'm up the exchange here. Six pawns for four, though. It's a really strange position. It's weird that it recommends this, but you guys and I should think about sacrificing a rook for a knight on c3 or a knight on f3 more often, because sometimes it's a good idea. Okay, so instead he went there. Blunder! I thought I was so clever pinning his pawn to his king. It turns out if I just took this one, then he would be forced to have the same position. Why was it so blunderful? Oh, because there's a really cool move that my opponent had that he did not play. Take that. Okay, where's the cool move for black? You guys can see it on screen, so let me change that. Black to move, and be awesome. Sorry you can't see the board very well. There, that's better. Black to move, guys. Okay, I'm now looking. How can black own it up here? I totally don't get it. Sorry, my nose is still bothering me. I totally don't get it, guys. The computer recommends rook c8. Do you see what the cool thing is here? Why can't I just move my queen out of the way? <laughs> Someone guesses rook takes f3 was the brilliancy. Nice. You're thinking along the right lines. Sacrifice all your rooks for all the pieces on f3. Why can't I just queen d3 here? Because it actually recommends for me a5. And then queen b3. Okay, so that's reasonable. Oh, it's a skewer. A skewer for the cleaver. Okay. Okay, so here's what I missed. I can't take this pawn or rook c8, and he wins my bishop on c1. Pretty obvious tactic um, that we both should have seen. Cool. Watch out for that. Bishop dead. Okay, so he missed that, and then I survived back into a kind of even position. So now I'm favored. I'm almost a pawn ahead. I'd like to knight e4 better here. Better than knight c4. Not too interested in the rest of the game. Oh, cool, though. I like this move. And instead of rook a2, it recommends rook d2. The reason is my knight is solid, solid outpost for my knight, and it's guarding this pawn already. So I don't need to put my rook behind it. I could be even more active with my rook. So if I play rook d2, his knight is really kept out of the action because he can't come over here very well. He can't come here, so his knight has a hard time coming in. It has to go this way. I can maneuver around, and the end game goes something like this, which is good for me. Okay, so is there anything else interesting in this game? I start pushing, computer says it's fine. Half pawn advantage for me. King d8 mistake. Should have come back with check. 
and now I have a large advantage. Oh, I thought rook f3 was so smart, but I should have just pushed f4. And I've got a, a two-pawn advantage, so we don't need to look at the rest. Cool, okay, great. Let's do that again, except play better. So I'm curious about that French defense, guys. French defense, I'll spell it this way, bishop d3, advance, I'm doing a Google. French defense number three, advanced variation. <laughs> Here is his, here's his analysis of the bishop d3 line. Oh, cool, a whole article. Let's take a look. But hey, this is our exact position. Isn't the internet great? Without the internet, you know what we would have to do to learn this stuff? We would have to write a letter to a grandmaster and say, Dear sir or madam, actually it would be sir because there aren't very many women grandmasters, what do I do about 6.bd3? and then mail that off, and then wait a few days, and then he'd arrive it. it. He would arrive the letter. And then wait a few days, and he'd write me something back and say, why are you wasting my time? I'm a GM. So I'm very thankful for the internet. Bishop d7, castles, take, take, knight takes d4. Oh, the Milner Berry Gambit. I forgot about this. This is what I could do, but sacrifice the pawn for peace development. And this is what our friend was talking about. Um, when he was saying that you could sacrifice on d4 and go for the attack. This is Leicester who recommended this. Knight c3, I'll have to try this. Knight e7, come out this way. Lose the other pawn. I've played this as black in tournaments before, but it's been so long because I've been playing chess for 15 years. I've been black and had the opponent sacrifice the pawn and been like, wow, free pawns, I'm taking them, and taking them. We're still waiting for a game over here, so that's why we're doing this. So interesting game here. Does white get anything? And here white blundered, so it's not clear. But it is not clear that white has enough compensation. I'm black this game, unfortunately. Cormoran Kerr is playing me. I'll play the French defense. Maybe I'll get to play that Milne, whatever it is. The Milner Barry Gambit. What was Barry thinking, giving up a pawn for nothing? How are you? Oh, it's the French defense advance. What a surprise. I get to play the rest of the position from the other side of the position. Um, what I meant to say was, I'm black. Let's see if he'll answer my question. Hello, I'm okay, thanks. Yes, it's talkative. We'll run him out of time with chatting. I want BD3. I want to play the Milner Berry Gambit, please. Maybe he'll oblige. Does he know about this gambit? I don't know. I just learned today what it was called. Look how strong he is. He's 1,800 at chess 960 over two games. I don't know if I can beat him. <laughs> don't know what that means. 1,800 after two games? That just means you won him. Okay, he's doing it. Thank you. I'm trying to improve. And then I'll give him the twitch.tv slash chesswiz link. How could he not see... How could he not see the stream? It's on the front page of Lychess, right? If you just go to Lychess.org, Chess with TV episode 46 self-study. So, okay, so now I don't know what to do. <laughs> How dare you recommend that I'm not <laughs> over 1900, Clarky? You say that I'm not over 1900, but I'm not, but I am, look. Bullet, 1942. Standard, 1933. I'm over 1900. Okay, Blitz. Oh, is it using the Blitz rating and I'm 1800? Is that the problem? I don't know what to do. I've accepted a Gambit and I don't know what I'm doing. That's pretty scary. This is kind of a cool Gambit. Finished development. Can't watch now. Net is too slow. Ha! Huh. I'll tell him his face is too slow, except that might slow him down. Hey, he can't download my message. His net is too slow. I like here. King H1? That's kind of weird. No problem. Oh, oh. Am I in trouble? That was King H1. Now I can't take with check. Okay, so take, take. I'm pinned. If I bishop C5... The knight a4. I really want to take b2. I'm doing it! 
I'm doing it. I haven't castled yet. Who cares? I've got free pawns. Okay. What's gonna happen? Huh? Oh, oh. Are you gonna win a piece? I don't think so. Cormoran. Bullet 2123. How do I see his regular rating? I'm so discombobulated about ratings. His standard rating is 2109. Okay, he's a good player. I think I'm going to lose this piece. It was it was fun taking that pawn, but I think I'm doomed now. <laughs> ah. <sighs> Come on, nose. There we go. Sorry about all the gross things happening on Chester's TV right now. A bloody knight is getting bloody captured. I can't keep guarding it with my queen. Looks like I'm going to lose a piece. I guess I need to be more careful. When they play king h1, I need to say, warning, warning, warning! I can no longer take that knight with check and escape my deadly pin of bishop e3. So, now I've learned something about the Barry Gambit, the Milner Barry. Barry Milner? Milner Barry. What was it? The Milner Barry Gambit. Cool. Now I've learned something. I think it's going to go down here from downhill from here. It's going down here from hill because Cormoran is pretty good. He's not going to let me get away with losing a piece and still surviving. Hmm. I'm out of the pin. If you take with queen, I get your knight, so you have to take with pawn. Here, right? Look at that. Look at that beautiful move. Another free pawn, and now I'm discovered attacking his knight and double attacking his bishop. So he has to bishop c2. He didn't. <laughs> What's going on? Now I could take a free rook or a free bishop. That's a tough choice. Huh? Well, I'll take a free bishop. Actually, it looks safer. Because I think I'll get a queen trade. And now, if you count the pawns, I have more. And if you don't, I still have more. So, that's why I did that. I have a winning position, it's good enough. Let's trade queens, pal. Let's trade them. Yes, that's the point. I'm a lot safer without queens. A6 is a good defensive move, according to chat. Thanks for the tip. Don't remember when I should have played h6, but I'll keep that in mind for the Milner Barry. He says, now it's too late, obviously. Thank you for adding the word obviously, because I wasn't sure if it was obvious that a6 was too late in this position. I think I'm doing really well. Somehow his attack fizzled out. I don't think rook takes rook takes, uh, <laughs> rook takes the blah blah. That's good enough. Just castle. Get some safety going here. I don't know about you, but I'm untangling myself. Is your rook trapped? Ho ho, Cormoran's gonna go down! But when we look at the computer analysis, we're gonna see just how hosed I was. I think rook takes bishop d7 was not good enough. Your rook looks very trapped. Resigns! I defeated Cormoran! GG! Too bad your net's too slow, otherwise you would have won. I don't know, I'm just making things up at this point. I had a question for you, Tebow, but I forgot what it was. Something about the website. Let's see if I can remember. Something about this website here. I'm pulling up the uh, computer analysis on this side of the board, on that tab over there. What was it? Oh, yeah. Tebow, I have a question for you. See how I have Leicester.org in parentheses? I used to have to do that because otherwise it wouldn't show up right here. So my question is, is that still true? Because I know you changed to a whitelist. Um, I'd love to play you 15 minutes aside. Not. That would take all day. Uh, so I want to know if I can take that off because it makes my title really long. And everybody knows about light chess anyway. Yes! Look at that! French Defense Advanced Variation... Oh, you can't see it. Sorry. Hold on. Okay. French Defense Advanced Variation Milner Berry Gambit. Success! Now let's see what it actually says about it. It says... 
Take, 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 take. King e1 and bleh. Knight e c6. Bleh. Bad mistake. Should have taken the knight. Yes. Should have taken the knight. Um, because now I know if king h1, then I can no longer take that knight with check. So do it now or do it never. If I play here, I blunder and then he can pin me. And look at that. It actually says here, let me help you guys see this. Advantage zero. So if you look at the, at the position, oh, look, advantage black the whole time. Wow, I had the advantage the whole time. Who knew? Who knew? Knight a4 was the mistake, okay? But it's still advantage zero, so apparently he can't win a piece. He should have taken on d5 to try to recover his pawns. What? What? I take, and you get that piece. Okay, so that recovers one pawn. Well, let's go back to that variation. So here, I have six pawns and he has five, but I'm still way out of whack in terms of development. Way out. Take, take. Oh. Chase the queen, chase the queen, chase the queen. Oh, it actually says it has to be a draw right here, right now, which is why it says advantage zero. Because if he does not do this forever and ever and ever, if he doesn't attack my queen, he won't get this knight back. And if I don't move my queen here, I won't keep the knight. So we just do this on and on and on. If I move off somewhere else, he gets my knight, and he's doing great because he's attacking me pretty fiercely in the center. And if I move off, if he stops attacking my queen, I get away with a piece. So that's why it's a draw. It's actually perpetual repetition whatever it's called. Hmm. Interesting. So knight a4, mistake. Now I'm starting to get an edge. I save my piece. Rook b1, queen a3. Rook takes b7, question mark? He should have taken this knight, and then I would get the piece back. So let's see how I was supposed to save it. I did the right thing. Look at that, guys. I did the right thing every move. All these question marks are for his moves. Oh, except for the knight e c6. says I should have just taken the rook, but I'm still ahead two pawns. Ahead by two pawns. Ahead by two pawns. Oh, weird. It wanted me to do this move, and... Oh, okay, that's very similar. Blunder. And white resigns. Advantage five pawns. Wow! Turns out, okay, I only made one major mistake. So there was a mistake in here when he took my bishop on d7, right here. It turns out I could have just taken that rook and been fine. If I just took the rook, I'd we'd be winning. The attack would not be strong, but still good. Still good. Okay, so I've won two games now with my self-study, but that means nothing. Have I improved? It's so hard to tell if you've improved, guys. It's so hard. But my rating went up. That means I improved. I just want to improve one rating point today. It's not very much, but in true skill, one rating point. So let's do that one more time. Let's take one more game of self-study, and we'll find out what we can learn. We're going to try to play that Milner Berry again to see what we can do with it. Almorn says that I should change my name to Chess Wizard, but I'm not a wizard. And he links to Urban Dictionary about wizard. Oh, wow. Wow, 30 plus year old virgin is, is the definition of wizard. Okay, there's two problems with that definition. The first one is I'm not 30 plus year old, and the second, well, you can figure that one out in your head. Actually, don't go too far in your head with that. You should probably just stop. As soon as you realize what it means, just stop imagining. It was just a joke. Great joke. You just totally made my stream PG-13 with your joke. Great. It's hard to get a game against such strong players. Why am I only 18-19? Oh, this is using the Blitz rating, which is a high rating. I mean, it's low. Everyone's low on Blitz. I mean, let's take a random person like GFGFGFGF66UTDTDDDDDD. Wow, that sure is random. He's random, and his Blitz rating, look how much lower it is than Bullets. See, because Blitz ratings are lower. That's proof right there. Actually, we'll go to players and take a strong player like... Don't be mad. He's pretty strong. Um, look how much lower Blitz is. Now let's look at let's look at this Schlecker. Look how much lower Blitz is. Now let's look at Pros books. Oh, Blitz has not been played. Okay, Fa Faffins. Blitz is lower, but he's only played one game. 
I'm trying to prove here that the Blitz ratings are lower everywhere. Here, this guy's played 48 games, 530 games, and what you see is Blitz rating is over 100 points lower. So it's hard to get a high Blitz rating. So when I said you have to be 1900 to play me, I was too restrictive. So let's cancel that, make it 1800. Because I'm only 1800, it turns out, at Blitz. So. Okay, one more game, one more learning session, one more increasing of the mind, and I think we'll have it. We will have fully improved. I don't think you answered my question, Ornikar. Are you there? Let me click the button that tells me who's here. Ornikar, are you there? Scrolly, scroll, scroll. Yes, you're on the list of viewers, so please tell me, Ornikar, if Lightest.org has to be in my stream title. I want to take it out. I'm tired of advertising for you, um, but I'm afraid that if I take it out, I will become nobody because I won't be on the front page of your website. Okay, I guess that doesn't sound like a very fair question. I want French defense, so please play E4 right now. Yeah, the question, Ornikar, is can I take that out? Oh, he's at work and not always listening. Oh, I'm not always listening when not at work. Okay, don't play E4 now. He, this guy says, hi, Chess Wiz. He capitalized the W correctly, and he spelled it correctly, but he left the small C, so I'm going to call him, hi, Michael134096. There. I put the capital in the wrong place, too. I hope you enjoy that. This is called the Nimzo Indian Defense, and it's what I play often against D4. So we'll learn something about it. Got to fianchetto this bishop because it's so blocked by pawns. Like, it's totally blocked. I'm out of water. Oh, he's like, it's a trade, right? I'm showing your stream on my homepage, he says. So you should put your, my website in your title. That seems fair to me. Bishop out. E5, pinned and stuck. Okay, get out of here. Move back. I'll win your pawn for free. You're right, Ornicar. That does seem fair. But I'm just curious if I can take it out and, and still get and still get on your front page. See, lightchess.org. That's so redundant because it says it right here, lightchess.org. Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't even ask. It was rude of me. I'm sorry. I'm usually rude. It's a way to get viewers, you know. Who would want to go online and watch someone who's really polite play chess? Would that be exciting? Chess is boring enough, but when you layer on politeness on top of it, polite chess players are like an ultimate snooze. So definitely have to be rude on Chess with TV. Just to keep it interesting. So that's my reasoning. Sorry if it was actually rude. It's better to be rude and then apologize. Uh-oh. My bishop is going to get trapped. A3, wherever I move, B4 traps it. Uh oh. <laughs> Ornicar correctly points out that this does not say Leicester.org up here because I smashed over it with my own text. Look, see, it's supposed to say Leicester.org, but I'm an. Uh, I don't know what the word is, but someone who covers up other people's logos with their own because you can see my logos on top of it now. Boo yeah! So he's a little bit. He's a little bit uh, feeling okay about that and a little bit not. How do I save my bishop? Hmm. He does say the answer is no. If I take it off, I'm not on the front page. Deal. I'll leave it on. You leave me on the front page. That's fine with me. I'm getting the better end of the deal because your website has a thousand people on it right now. And my stream has like 30 people on it. So yeah, you the numbers are in your favor. Correctly, correctly analyzed. That is true. That's a new phrase. Correctly analyzed, I think this. How do I save my bishop, though? Uh, uh, mm. I'm going to... Uh, computer's going to tell me how I could have done it. D takes... D takes... And then rook d8. That's a good kibitz, ragritz. That's a good kibitz. Ornikar says it's a deal. He'll leave me on his front page and I'll put Lichess in my stream title. Sounds good to me. We've got a deal. Because being on the front page of Lichess.org is way better. Oh, he's still going to trap me? No, I'm, I'm going to escape. It's really close, but I do not get trapped. 
it's it's way better to be on the front page of a website with a thousand people right now than to whatever the other option was. Wow, you are trapping me. You're so clever, but what if I take here? Does that save me? Nope. What if I... Ooh, I'm so trapped. I'm so trapped. You're an amazing bishop trapper, Michael. You're so good at that. I'm going to run out of time trying to figure out how to escape your wily traps. Oh. Don't take the knight first. When he recaptures, my rook is doomed. But this way... So the clock is a problem for me. I spent all my time talking about how to get on the front page of a popular website. But I think I escaped. Haha, <laughs> escaped your trap. Because if he takes, I take this and the, the bishop's pinned, win a knight, so I recover. And hopefully, no matter what else he does, I can play bishop d4 and survive. It may not be true, though. I mean, yeah, it may not be. I'm not even sure what he's going to do, but we'll try it. I have to move really fast now. I have 10 seconds. Two seconds added per move. So, every move I get two seconds, so I could survive, but it's going to be tough. <clears throat> Looking good. Double attack on the e5 square now. Got the rest of my pieces out. I'm untrapped. Yes. He has discovered... He has check here. He has bishop h7. Maybe which opens up an attack here, so I have to watch out for that. I'm still alive. Doing great. If knight f6 check, I just eat that thing, and he doesn't win anything. Take his powerful pieces. Bring in my pieces. I survived, and I'm ahead of pawn because I won the e5 pawn. Take that! Is this going to be my third win? It's not easy. Oh, nice fork! If I take, I lose my queen! Otherwise, I lose my rook. Brilliant move. I could have avoided that. Didn't have to die to a fork. I just did it for fun. Oh, I shouldn't shouldn't be allowing a queen trade either. Because his rook is a lot, a lot better than a bishop here. His rook is way better. He's going to beat me so hard. Maybe not. He can't protect this pawn. No, he's going to win one more pawn, and that's the pawn he needs to defeat me. Yeah. Well, I'll play the ending just in case it's really good for me. Just in case this is a win for black, I'll play it out. Oh, why did I come on this side? I don't know. Should have gone underneath, down here. Not that it would help. I guess I'll resign. Wait, back rank checkmate! Checkmate. Oh, it's not a rook. GG. GG to you. Okay, so we're going to replay and analyze that game, which is what I'm punching right now. Punch you in the in the button. I punch that replay and analyze right in the button. Okay, it's analyzing. I'll take this brief moment to tell you guys this episode was boring. I warned you of that, but that's okay. Next episode is three checks chess. That's a new variant that's been added to lightchess.org, where as soon as you check your opponent three times, you instantly win. So you would think, oh, this game is only going to go like five moves. But no, if you're really careful, you can prevent all checks by just covering your king with things that aren't his pieces. And then you survive till the middle game, so it actually becomes quite an interesting game. It's better to be white, as in regular chess, but I think there's the draw is not the actual outcome, because three checks happen so easily. So I think white wins at a perfect game instead of draw in a perfect game, is my guess. So yeah, it's nice to be white in three checks chess, but next episode, the point is, next episode we're playing three checks chess. And then after that, we've got Fun Day Monday, so sell, send me your games where you're castling on the opposite side as your opponent and pawn storming him. I'm excited to see those. The analysis is done. Let's go f learn about the Horowitz defense. I don't even know what Horowitz means. Horowitz, let's ask the internet. Horowitz, Horowitz internet, Horowitz defense, whoops, or just Horowitz D defense. Look at that, there's the Horowitz Horowitz. Okay, so the Horowitz defense is, chess.com tells us, that's all, d4e6? Why did I waste my time Googling that? Wow. 
Is this good for white? Nope, it just says it's in even position. Even position, even position, it still says it's even. Bishop d6, blunder, best move is f5. Okay, so I sat here for a whole minute, 60 full seconds, trying to decide what to do and trying to get my name on the front page of light chess. I should have just played f5, forcing the knight away. And then, and then, queen e2. That's kind of weird. Why wouldn't you save the knight? It doesn't have anywhere good, huh? Oh, and I'm going to push e4 and get a big advantage. I could have started to get a big advantage in this game with e4 in that line. Okay, so actually what happened was I moved back, he took my pawn, I moved here, white's starting to get an edge, pin, queen up, b5 blunder, losing this pawn. Another blunder, he should have taken my knight. So I'm ahead by 2.12 here. Huge advantage. And this was about when I was saying, looks like I'm going to beat a third opponent, but I was wrong. So I played rook ad8. I capped, I just doubled up my rooks, but my problem is the rook ends up after the trade floating out here in d4. It's hard to defend. And actually the problem is I get forked immediately. I should have just traded rooks and brought my other rook to d8. I wasn't thinking clearly because I was almost out of time. Otherwise I would have just seen my queen guards d8. Now if my queen is somewhere over here like g6, okay, somewhere way over here like uh, h4 then oh no not not there what if my queen is over here on a4 anyway i would want to back up my rook i wouldn't take because my second rook couldn't line up on this file i want my second rook to be active but in this position i'm just fine take first i can immediately bring my second rook with sente i mean with tempo kick that queen off and keep the open file so i should have just captured oh it actually says i should have taken this free pawn what do you know another free pawn but capturing was still better than than what I did, which was double up my rooks, and leave my rook hanging out here where I get forked. Oh, there was a way to avoid the fork. There was a much better move. Here, threatening checkmate. Oh, I wish I'd seen this. He has to come back to stop queen takes g2 checkmate, and then he doesn't win my rook, and now I'm totally winning. Missed that one. Okay, so now he's winning by two pawns, and the rest of the game is so ugly blunder 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 resigns well that part wasn't so good gg well i learned from this game what did i learn i learn anything something about this i learned i could throw f5 in here but i don't think i'll ever be able to apply that education yeah I don't know, I guess I learned to check for intermezzos. That's what I learned. So here he played a3, and I immediately played bishop d6, immediately. When I've got a piece under attack, but there's tension going on in the center, like in this case, he needs to recapture this, I need to take a little bit more time to look for other moves that create larger threats instead of just dealing with his threat. So I, in this case, could have left my bishop here and made a different threat with f5, which actually turns out to be really great, and I would win if I played f5. Instead, I just responded to his threat immediately. So I need to just, when I'm under attack, I need to not move instantly. I'm used to moving instantly, because that's usually what I do. And instead, look for other attacks that I could throw in in between. That's called an intermezzo, where you throw a move in in between. It's an in-between move. He threatens something, you don't respond. Instead, you throw in an intermezzo. He responds to that, and then you can go back to your original problem which I'm going to do right after this cast. I'm going to go back to my original problem. Sorry, hacked. I'm not going to play you now either, but thanks for the challenge. Well, I think we learned a couple things. That was fun. That was sufficiently boring. The only exciting part was when I was rude, because rudeness is exciting. But I had a good time. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Like I said, next episode is Three Checks Chess on Saturday, and then Tuesday is Fun Day Monday. Wrap your mind around that. If you have a message for me, send it to me. And if you don't, don't send it to me. That's all I have to say. But I have you a captive audience. It's like you guys are listening to me right now. So why should I turn off the stream and become the nobody that I really am when I have power over the internet? I could say to you something like, peaches taste good. And then you're all going to be like, yeah, I'll go eat some peaches. I have so much power. But I'm going to throw it away right now because I'm saying goodbye. Thanks for watching.